does want the best for you. Yeah. And so I'm going to turn it over, uh, Jen, uh, uh, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, Brother Fred. The title to, of the message tonight is Walking in God's Best. God has good things for all of us. And he is good and he wants to give good things mm -hmm. to you. And he withholds no good, good thing. thing. So he's a good God, and it's, uh, there are rewards from serving him, and that's what we want to talk about today. How do we walk in God's best? And I, I just have four simple points I want to make, and then I will come back and elaborate on these four points. And the first one is believe that what God wants for you is better than anything you can get on your own. Number two, hallelujah, gain access to God's best through the Holy Spirit. Number three, put eternal things ahead of temporal or temporary things. Mm -hmm. And number four, uh, <laughs> it's a put aside everything else, mm. forsake all, all other things. things, okay? So those are, the, those are the four points. I'm going to elaborate on them. I'll come back to them. Number one, and that's what I'm going to start talking about now. Number one is God has good things for you. And you need to believe that what God has for you is better than what you can get on your own. Oh, hallelujah. Now, there are two things that are sitting in front of all of us, and that is what God has for us and what we can grab and grasp ourselves. And let me tell you, what God has is better than what we can grab and grasp for. Uh, and, and Psalm 47, verse 4 says that he has an inheritance for us. He's marked out an inheritance uh, before time began. He marked out an inheritance for us, and it was the best. It was the best inheritance. Hallelujah. And uh, Deuteronomy 12, 9 says that you can only rest in your inheritance. Oh, so, that's good. So you may want to think about, well, mm. why am I not having rest? Why am I not being able to sleep soundly at night? It's because you haven't gotten into your inheritance. Ooh. You're still trying to grasp and mm. hold on to things uh, yourself and not seeking what God has for you. God wants to give you the best. Oh, and what yeah. the way you get the best is to receive it by believing mm -hmm. <laughs> that he has that for you. Mm -hmm. But what you grab and grasp, see, is not going to last. Uh, I, I believe it was uh, John uh, said in John 3, 27, that uh, a person has nothing except what he receives from heaven. Uh, so you mm -hmm. have, so you might think, well, I've grabbed this and I've grasped that uh, and, and I've gotten these things on my own, my own strength and my own intellect. And I've gotten all of these things and I've accumulated all of these things. But, but what that verse said in John was that it's nothing. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't compare uh, with, with, what God has for you. Mm. It, and Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts I have for you. I know mm, the, the plans, plans I that have. I have for you and they are good. And uh, it's going to give you an expected end. It's going to prosper you and it's going to give you a future and an expectation. They're good plans and they don't compare with what you strive for and mm -hmm. what you grab for the whole that's what the world does the world is out there grasping and and uh, uh gathering and hoarding up uh that's the world but you're not of the world you're in the world but you're from heaven you're a citizen, citizen of, of heaven. heaven but it's I the worldly heard. people it's the worldly people uh that are uh grasping and grabbing things and striving and 
and knocking people back and forth and trying to get all they can get. And, and the Bible says that's nothing mm -hmm. because it doesn't last. What you, what you get like that, it doesn't last. Now, let me give you a personal. Can I, no. <laughs> can I just make one small okay. comment here? Okay. I just want to just elaborate just a little bit on that word in, inheritance. I love that word. I love that word. And, and, and inheritance is something that you have not had to work for. It's something that's given to you. For instance, my dad is 96 years old. And I know that because he's told me that there is, uh, there is an inheritance for my sister and I. And, and he talks about that. And it's something that he worked for. That he, he was the one that got the inheritance. And, and, and he is going to freely give it to us, you know, when he goes on to be with the Lord. But I think about Jesus because he's the one that did it all to give you an inheritance. You have not had to work for it. You did not get whipped on the back. You did not have a crown of thorns put on your head, but still you get an inheritance. Okay, that's very good. Well, and another thing about the inheritance, you, you don't have to wait uh, until you die. You, you get it in this life that's right and it's like sherry uh her dad gives her an inheritance every few months uh gives mm -hmm. her a, a, an in part of her inheritance so it's not about or well, just sitting there waiting to, until uh he dies but he gives her an inheritance mm -hmm. uh frequently and and so that's a part of her inheritance and she's hallelujah she can live on that inheritance and do what she wants to well it's the same thing with god god's giving you an, an inheritance, inheritance right now, now. And it's good. And when you realize that it's a good inheritance and it's better than anything you can strive and work for, then you can rest. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I love that. Verse. Now, don't yeah. you know, don't you know that uh, at the beginning of the year, we talked about uh, some resolutions and, and the first, yeah, one of them rest. was about let us enter into rest. Woo! Hallelujah. And let us help others enter into rest. Mm. And so I'm telling you, uh, the way to enter into rest is to realize what God has for you is better than anything you could strive mm -hmm. uh, for yourself to get without him. And so that's the, that's the first one. Then you have to realize he's the one that has the inheritance. He's already marked it out uh, for you. And it's the best inheritance you, you can possibly imagine. So I just want you to think as we go through this uh, message tonight is what do you think your life and your family would be uh how, how, what what is the best you can imagine your situation being well obviously it includes health it includes a sound mind a peace a strong relationships uh with your spouse and with your children and your children uh serving the lord and and uh, being successful in life, all of those, you can imagine all of those things. God's best for you is all of that and much, much, much more. more. I mean. Glory to God. This, this is an encouraging message, and I hope you'll be encouraged by it, that God has the best for you. He wants to give you the best, and you have to believe that what God has for you is better than anything you can get on your own. Amen. Okay, so we're going to go to point number two. Point number two is to gain access to God's best through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why, why did I say that? Because it's God's, uh, he has everything. He gave everything to Jesus and Jesus uses the Holy Spirit. Let's the Holy Spirit administer, administer. everything that God has. Uh, see, everything is in the kingdom. Everything is in God's kingdom. And the kingdom is the realm of the Holy Spirit. It's the where the Holy Spirit operates. A and so he administers it. It was the Father's. Everything the Father has has been given to Jesus. And everything Jesus has, he turns over to the Holy Spirit to administer to you because the Holy Spirit is the God on the earth. And so we have to connect with the Holy Spirit. That, that's what this uh, second point is. You have to connect with the Holy Spirit. And the 
way to begin connecting with the Holy Spirit is to communicate with him. Mm. And so I want to talk about two different ways to communicate with the Holy Spirit. Of course, they're related, but just two way, two different ways uh, to look at it. And um, it's about the heart. See, when you're born again, your spirit man comes alive because mm -hmm. our heavenly father is the father of spirits. So he's the father of your spirit man and uh, not the outer man, but the spirit man, the inner man. That's the he, heavenly father is the father of that, of your spirit man. OK, and so you, you need to think and communicate Oh, with your spirit, man, or with your heart. And um, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verses 17 and 18 says that unbelievers and worldly people, they make decisions with their mind. Mm -hmm. They base it on facts and what they hear and what they hear on television. They base their decisions on the mind mm -hmm. because their heart is darkened. Woo! Okay, but now Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18 is a prayer, and it prays, uh, mm. Paul prayed it, and, and you and I have prayed this uh, for each other. We did this earlier this year. Uh, we pray that the, uh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the Father, no, that's not the one, uh, <laughs> he gives you the spirit of wisdom, wisdom and revelation. And revelation in the knowledge of him, that the understanding of your heart or the eyes of your heart, here it is, be enlightened so that you'll know what? The hope of your calling mm -hmm. and the riches of the inheritance. Oh, and so yeah. how are we going to know the riches of the inheritance amen. except through the heart? And we have to have the heart understanding it. And so our heart, so we prayed it. You prayed it. I prayed it. We've prayed it for each other that our heart have understanding. And so now you can follow your heart because that's what we prayed. Mm -hmm. That's what we believed. That's what we received. That our heart is uh, has understanding, and it understands our calling, and it understands our inheritance, the riches of our inheritance. So now you can trust your heart. Worldly people and unbelievers, un they cannot trust their heart because they make decisions with the mind. But uh, believers, see, if you've prayed the prayer and you've believed and you've received, then your heart is, uh, it's, it, you can trust your heart. That's mm -hmm. what it is. You can trust your heart to make decisions. Now I want to give you a personal example. And the personal example is this, that I worked at the university for a number of years, and I was a researcher and a teacher. And that was my career path. And that's what I wanted to do. But one day, August the 15th, 1997, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said that I would be a uh, administrator, that I would be a temporary department head and a permanent department head. Now, that was not what I wanted to do. But you know what? I accepted it because I knew what he had was better. better. It was the best. Oh, that's good. What God had for me was the best. <laughs> and so I accepted it. I didn't question it. This is what he wants me to do. I know this is best. I have a career path. I've been on that for a number of years, but I'm willing to change my career path and no longer be a researcher and a teacher, but become an administrator <clears throat> because I knew what he had for me was best. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Amen. And so uh, in two weeks, I was a temporary department head. Uh, he told me on August 15th mm -hmm. and on September the 1st, I was. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was no question in my mind because I knew what he had for me was better than mm -hmm. what I could do on my own. I, I, I live this. I live this mm -hmm. uh, message. It's alive <laughs> to me. It's important to me. But it also should be important to you that you realize that God has something better for you 
than what you can strive and achieve on your own. Amen. You need to involve him in your life and follow him. And so uh, I became a, a temporary department head. And after a while, they accepted me. Uh, and I was a, appointed permanent department head uh, for a number of years. Now, I had about 100 employees. And that included uh, faculty, staff, um, graduate students, uh, all kinds of people, and then different cities. And so I supervised all of those people. And I, over those years, I was department head. I made a lot of hiring and firing decisions. Mm -hmm. But you know how I made the decisions? I made it with my heart. I made it with my heart. Not your mind. And not my mind. Uh, because there would be uh, lots of applications. A lot of people wanted to come here and be at this department. A and, uh, and they all looked good. And there were lots of them and lots of them looked good. So I involved uh, faculty uh, and sometimes staff to help me make decisions about hiring people. And uh, sometimes they'd come back to me with recommendations that were okay and I could support them because in my heart I felt like those were the best applicants but many times the the committee that were making these uh, recommendations to me they would choose someone that did not go with my heart mm -hmm. my heart did not agree with that and so I would not hire those people except one time mm -hmm. they really forced me to make a decision on hiring a staff member that I did not want to hire. And so I hired that staff member and it wasn't long until those faculty came back to me and apologized to, for making me hire someone I did not want to hire because it turned out to be a failure. That mm. person was an absolute disaster, but, it, uh, but the person moved on out and, and went some other place very quickly. But I knew my heart I've got to follow my heart, not my mind. Unbelievers, worldly people are going to follow their mind and just bare facts. But see, my whole my spirit communicates with the Holy Spirit. And if if I am thinking about a decision and uh, and if I'm forced into it, then I'm thinking about with my mind. But if I have time to reflect on things. I will go with the decision that's right in my heart because I know the Holy Spirit is communicating with me and knows things and my heart knows things that my mind cannot know. So the first way is to communicate with your heart, to take time. Uh, you consider, yeah, it's good to get facts and, and, and think about facts and all, but your final decisions and the major decisions, you should go with what's in your heart. This is a way to gain access to the Holy Spirit. Mm. And you're relying on the Holy Spirit to help you make uh, decisions that are important, that, that are really matter to you. Uh, and I hired a lot of people. I fired a lot of people. And I did it by my heart because that was my heart was in communication with the Holy Spirit. I wanted to make the right decision. I wanted the Holy Spirit uh, to give me direction on it. And Colossians uh, 315 says uh, you may have peace uh, let peace rule mm -hmm. your heart mm -hmm. peace mm -hmm. and so when I have peace in my heart I know I'm making the right decision mm -hmm. see if I if my heart is in turmoil I, I know I'm not making the right decision I have to wait till I have the uh, uh, peace in my heart and that's the decision I will make mm -hmm. now the second way to communicate with the Holy Spirit is with the uh, spirit language and be filled with the Holy Spirit, be baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, speak in tongues, and that uh, speaking in tongues is a spirit language, and that mm -hmm. communicates. It communicates with God directly. Nothing can interfere with it when you're praying in tongues. Uh, that's the spirit language. Now, if you spend time praying in tongues, the spirit language, then the spirit will come back to you and give you uh, response. Yeah. The Holy Spirit instructions wants to give you instructions, wants to give you direction, 
wants to help you with your decisions because he is giving you God's best. Uh, that's the way we have access to God's best is through the Holy Spirit. And see, if we're uh, bypassing the Holy Spirit, we are not getting God's best. Mm, it's mm, the Holy mm. Spirit that is administering God's, God's riches best. and his best. And mm. so we have to communicate with him. We have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit to operate in God's best. Mm. And so I encourage you to do this. And so when his when his words come back to you, they come back through your spirit. And then they come up like a, a vapor or a whisper. And you have to catch mm. them when they come through your mind. They come back to your spirit because the Holy Spirit is inside of you uh, in your spirit. And he communicates with your spirit. And mm. his words, they come up like vapor, mm -hmm. like whispers. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to recognize, oh, that's the Holy Spirit said mm -hmm. that. Catch I, hold of it. You have to catch hold of it. Uh, see, if he, if, uh, if I've asked uh, about what I needed to do about something and he tells me to give $10 to somebody, uh, then that 10, that thought of giving somebody $10, th $10 so mm -hmm. that floats up like a spirit, uh, like a vapor, like a whisper, and I have to catch hold of it. Mm -hmm. Those are spirit words uh, mm -hmm. because I speak Love to him. That. He speaks to me and I've got to expect a response. Yes. He's going to respond to you. I have to expect a response. And, and if I never catch hold of these of these vapor words or these spirit words as they rise up, then I don't listen to him. I have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about two ways to communicate with him. One is have peace in your heart about the decisions you make, but sometimes you, you need to make make decisions about things even you don't know, and so you need the Holy Spirit telling you. You need to be able to recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit because he's going to respond. You ask him something, give him time, and he will respond, and you have to be sensitive to his response, hear the spirit and obey him quickly. And he is a person. Uh, the father's a person. Jesus is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesus gives the Holy Spirit the riches uh, and he wants to distribute them. He wants to give you things, but you have to communicate with him. Okay. Sherry wants to I, say something. I just want to to encourage you uh, that there uh, are, are great um, resources out there. If you want more information about this, uh, about communicating with the Holy Spirit. And one book that, that I read that um, meant a lot to me uh, was, uh, and some of you have, may have read it, it's by Benny Hinn and it's called uh, Good Morning Holy Spirit. Uh, Good Morning Holy Spirit by Benny Hinn, and he talks about communicating with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, there are two other uh, points that I want to make, and I'm going to be much more brief on these two. Uh, the first two, I, I went into more detail, but on these uh, last two, because I'm bringing this uh, message uh, to closure uh, quickly, and the third point is to put eternal things above temporal mm -hmm. or temporary things. Okay, so this, I'm talking about, what kind of things am I talking about? Eternal things. Well, that's meditating on God's word, uh, being led by the spirit, seeking the kingdom first. Those are all eternal things. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you put those things ahead of temporal things. What? What are temporary things? Well, uh, that's what the TV is saying. Those are temporary. Those are temporal things. So what the what the movie Holly, what Hollywood is saying, all of those things, all are what your boss is saying, what uh, um, what uh, the newspaper is saying. All of these things are temporary. The eternal things are God's peace and uh, faith. Those are eternal things. 
seeking first the kingdom. The mm -hmm. kingdom is eternal. And so we have to put those things first. Second Corinthians uh, chapter four, verses 17 and 18 says, we have momentary light afflictions. Okay, so what we all have problems. We all have trouble. We all have uh, attacks of the enemy. We all, all got these things going on. But those are just momentary light afflictions when we're looking at eternal things, when we're put, putting eternal things first. That, that's what we need to do. Don't, don't put all of your emphasis on these temporary things. So the temporary things are the are the problems in your body, the pains in your body, the sickness in your body, the, the low finances, not enough money to uh, go through the month. All of those are just temporary, light, momentary, light. You hear that? Light afflictions mm -hmm. in comparison to the eternal weight of glory. Now, mm -hmm. what is the eternal weight? Well, that's, that's God's best. That's mm. God's best, the eternal, be, because see, God has a different perspective than man has. God has an eternal perspective, and, and that's the reason that Jesus could say, I only do what I see my father do. I only speak what I hear my father say, because he knew God had the best plan for him, and that it was a hard plan for him to go to the cross. It was very difficult uh, for him to, but, but Paul said that was just a momentary light affliction uh, <coughs> while we're looking at uh, eternal things. And so you look at Jesus's situation from the beginning through eternity, from eternity uh, back through time and then out into eternity. Okay, went to the cross and we would think that was a terrible, terrible thing. And it was, it was a terrible thing for Jesus to go to the cross, but yet it worked out the eternal weight of glory. It worked out God's eternal purpose for mm, Jesus. Mm, and he good. could say, he could say when he was walking on the earth that I only mm -hmm. do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. Why? Because he knew God's plan was best, and he was going to abide by God's plan, not what he could have achieved. He, he you know, the devil offered him uh, the kingdoms of this world. That's what he came here for. The devil said, you can have them if you just bow down and worship me, but he wouldn't do it because he was looking for an eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things that are not seen. Mm. The things that are seen, see, are temporal, but that also means they're temporary, and they can be changed. Hallelujah. But the eternal things, that's what we need to be focusing on. It's what God has for us that is in this realm and in eternity. It's all, God sees everything, and he puts it all together, and that's what is best for you. He has it all planned out for you. It's the best that you could possibly imagine. And that's what he wants to give you. But you've got to make a decision. You've got to make a decision that you want God's best. Mm -hmm. And see, mm -hmm. it, there are two ways we connect. We either connect with the eternal realm or we connect with the temporal our temporary realm. Mm. The way we connect with the eternal is with faith. That's what connects us to the eternal realm. What are the eternal things? Well, it's meditating on the word of God. It's the kingdom of God. It's being led by the spirit of God. Mm. Or we can focus on temporary things, things that are seen. And how do we connect with those? By our senses. Yes. By our yes. senses, by what we see, what we hear, what we, what we feel, feel, how we feel about something. All of those are senses, natural senses. And we're in that way, we connect with the worldly things, the things that are seen, but those are not the best things. God has the best things for us are some of the things that are unseen. Some of them are manifested, and yes, we see them, but we they're manifested by faith. Yes. Glory right. to God. 
So here's the number. The number third, third one is we put the eternal things before, before the temporal yeah. things. There, when we say these are more important. So when we get up in the morning, we're not just thinking about the schedule for the day and our agenda for today. What we have mm -hmm. to accomplish have for, for breakfast. Uh, not just those natural <laughs> things, but we have to think about what is eternal. Maybe we need to pray uh, in the morning. Maybe we need to read our Bible. Maybe we ask the Lord for guidance. Uh, seek first the kingdom of God. So before you go out and eat your breakfast, seek first the kingdom of God. What does he want you to do in the day? Put eternal things ahead of temporal or temporary things. And now number four, here's number four, forsake all else. If you want God's best, you have to forsake everything else. You know, Jesus put it this way yeah. in Matthew 16, 24. He said, if you're going to follow me, you're going to be my disciple. You've got to deny yourself and take, take up, up your, your cross, cross and, and follow, follow me. me. Now, what is our cross? Well, see, uh, uh, the way I like to explain a cross is, is this is the way I've been going. And if I take up my cross, I'm going to follow the Lord. And so there's the there's that intersection of the way I've been going, and I'm going to turn and go the way God wants me to go. That's my cross that I have to carry. Mm. Glory to God. And that's what happened on uh, August the 15th, 1997. Mm. It, it happens a lot of times, but it really happened. That was a significant time for me because I was going in one way, and he told me to go in the other way. I was, I was a researcher and a teacher, and I was perfectly happy and fine with it, but he told me to be an administrator, and, and that was his plan. Glory to God. That was a cross. I had to carry that cross, but I was well pleased, and looking back over, uh, that's what I should have done, and that's what I did, and I'm glad I did it. Well, thank you. Uh, I hope that these four points uh, all have meant uh, something to you. Uh, I've tried to keep this message simple. Uh, this is a, a, a very important message. Mm -hmm. If you want God's best, there, there's some things that you need to do. And I've just boiled it down to these four things. <laughs> and I hope this will be a help to you. Thank you for being here today. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Well, it is wonderful to be able to walk in our inheritance and to walk in the very best that God has for us. Uh, healing uh, is his best. Wholeness is his best. Uh, uh, financial uh, provision is his best. And so uh, having a, a, a wonderful relationship with our family uh, is, is his best. And, and so I think, you know, in my spirit, man, um, I feel like some of you have settled for, for less than the best. You've said, well, this is all that is there for me. And, but this message, I pray, will touch your hearts and that you will, it will stir you uh, to the point that you will begin to, to seek God's best. 